Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, in the last video, we looked at a block on a frictionless inclined plane, and uh, we solved some questions about this block. And now I want to do a sort of related, slightly more complicated problem uh, with a frictionless inclined plane. But now there will be two blocks. Uh, there'll be a block uh, one which has mass m1 and there'll be block 2 which has mass m2 and these will be connected by a, a string that goes over a, a pulley and um, in the last video we uh, discussed a little bit about how to define the coordinate system but the coordinate system was there was just one coordinate system there was only one block but we have to be careful with this problem because if we define, for example, a coordinate system for this block and a coordinate system for this block, these two coordinate systems may in fact be inconsistent. And, and it's not the right way to think about the problem. The right way to think about the problem is to realize that um, this, this block can only go up and down and this block can only go this way which is to say that there is uh, effectively, you know, a, the, well, maybe you could think about it like the, the coordinate axes are bent. And um, let me make it clear. Let me get rid of that. Whoops. Let me get rid of this. Um, what, what we really want to do is to define a coordinate system that... Uh, is such that um, the coordinates are like this, right? Think about it like that. And we want to define a plus side of that and a minus side of that. And I will go ahead and define this way as plus and this way as minus. And you'll see why uh, it, it doesn't matter which side of this I chose as plus and minus, but it does matter that I drew the coordinate system in this way. And let me let me show you now how, how one will use it. Okay, so, um, you know, as usual, we have a, uh, we have an angle for this inclined plane, which is uh, theta. And, um, okay, so now uh, with our two masses and our inclined plane at a certain angle, we draw uh, two free body diagrams. Um, first for um, block one and the other one for block two. And let's, uh, well, let's draw the forces also. Let's do that instead. So clearly um, this block is going to have uh, its force due to gravity from block M2, which is just M2 times G. And there will be a tension up from the string. And this block is going to have a tension from the string. And these two t's are the same, and that's the trick for this problem. Uh, there will, will, as usual, be a normal force, uh, which is perpendicular to the plane, always. And there will be the force due to gravity for block 1, uh, which has magnitude m1 times g. So these are all the forces in the problem. Uh, as usual, if we had friction, um, we would have we could uh, imagine uh, that if the if the motion was in the same direction as my coordinate system and friction opposes it, then the then the force of friction would be pointing that way. But we're going to do this frictionless uh, for now. Okay, so uh, let's look at the free body diagram for block two. Uh, for, for block two, uh, we have, now remember that positive is in, in this uh, sense as I drew it here in the coordinate system. So in that sense, um, this force of gravity that's pointing down, this guy, um, is positive because uh, it's pointing parallel to this uh, red coordinate system that I defined. 
So that means that the sum of the forces for block 2 is a positive m2 times g. And the tension goes the other way. It's, in fact, negative because it points in the opposite direction as my red coordinate system. And that sum of those forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Uh, sorry, this is mass 2 times the acceleration. The acceleration, like the tensions, will be the same because the string doesn't stretch. So I don't need a label for A. OK, um, now for our, as you saw in our previous problem, this force of gravity can be broken up into its two components. Um, this component is uh, m1g cos theta, and this component is m1g sine theta. And we're going to have to get the signs right if we're going to deal with this. Now, because there's no friction, we don't, we don't care about the frictional force, so we really don't actually care about the magnitude of the normal force. We can just collect the forces that are horizontal, uh, sort of parallel to the inclined plane. And for those, uh, here we have the tension, and that is along the direction of my red coordinate system, so that's positive. And we subtract, because this component here is pointing this direction, m1g times sine of theta. And there are no other x forces, uh, sorry, forces along the uh, inclined plane for that block. And this is equal to m1 times a, where these two a's are the same. OK, so uh, uh, basically the trick now is to, um, is to uh, uh, solve for A or T. And then once you have that, then you can uh, solve for the other guy. Um, uh, from the first equation, so let's call this equation one, this is equation two. Um, for the first equation, we have that uh, the tension is equal to um, M2 times g minus a. Let me see if I did that right. Tension is, uh, tension, bring that to the right, bring a to the other side, g minus a, right. So that that's uh, correct. That's another form of equation one. And then for equation two, we have the tension is equal to uh, m1 and uh, let's see, a plus g sine theta tension bring that over to the other side take m1 out so it's a plus right so those are so so far so good and now we could set we, we could set these two um, equations these these two equations are both t so we could then set these two things um, uh, equal to each other and solve for a and and alternatively um, you can uh, solve uh, for a, and uh, from the first equation, you would get that a is equal to uh, minus t over m2 uh, plus g. That's another form of uh, equation one. And another form of equation two is a is equal to uh, T over M1 minus G sine theta, right? And in this case, now we have uh, two accelerations are the same, and we can set those equal to each other. And um, so, I mean, we can pick one. We either solve for T first or we solve for A first. Um, let's do... Uh, Let's solve uh, for t. And uh, in that case, we have uh, minus t over m2 plus g is equal to t over m1 minus g sine theta. 
uh, which then means that uh, g1 plus sine theta, I'm bringing both g, g equations on the left side, and on the right side I have t times 1 over m1 plus 1 over m2. All right, it's just algebra. I know I'm doing it quickly, but you could you can confirm this for yourself. And so uh, that means that the tension uh, is equal to uh, 1 plus g, sorry, g, 1 plus sine theta, divided by 1 over m1 plus 1 over m2. Now let's say that we have m1 equals, say, 2 kilograms, and m2 is equal to 4 kilograms, and let's say that theta is 40 degrees, then uh, what we end up with is that T, uh, well, let's just do it this way, 1 over uh, uh, 2 plus 1 over 4 is equal to G1 plus sine theta, which is, I uh, calculated it a second ago, and that's a 16.1 newtons. And so that T equals, that's three quarters, four thirds times, oops, oops, what did I do? Go away. Four thirds times 16.1, which is equal to uh, 21.5 newtons. All right, so there's the tension. And then we can take that tension and put it into either of these equations, either one. You'll get the same answer, and you can, in fact, check this. Um, but uh, when you do that, um, if we put it in, uh, say, to the first equation, we would get that the acceleration is minus 21.5 five divided by four plus g and the acceleration is then uh, 4.4 4 meters per second squared all right so uh, this was um, the, the natural uh, extension of the kind of problem we did before and the trick here uh, was you had two free body diagrams but you had to be very careful about your coordinate system because if you you know, defined x and y axes like we did for the, the previous video, which just had one block, you could end up with your directions being inconsistent. And so a, a big uh, trick here is to, uh, is, to, is to consider a coordinate system that looks like this, right? Um, okay, now the acceleration being positive um, here means that this uh, what's going to happen with this system is that is that this block is going to go down and this block is going to go to the right because the acceleration was positive and I have positive going uh, that way um, which kind of makes sense because uh, m2 is heavier than m1 so um, you know without worrying about too much about the angles you might imagine that um, the uh, m2 would would pull the system um, in the same direction as my positive uh, coordinate system. All right. Um, well, I hope this helped. Um, and uh, if you liked it, uh, you know, like the video or subscribe. And uh, we'll make more of these. Take care.